everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today's video will be another installment on my fan theory series. Today we're going to be taking a look at what happened to Asmodian. As with all of my fan theory videos, we'll take a look at the various theories surrounding the topic, and then we'll look for evidence both for and against, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not I think the theory is valid. This video will deviate slightly from that formula, however, as we actually know the answer to this one definitively, yet for some reason much of the fan base isn't aware. So we'll break it down as though we don't know the answer, and we'll go through the options before settling on the actual conclusion. However, before diving into the theory, let me first give a big thank you to Audible.com for their support on the channel. Audible.com is the world's largest source of audiobooks with many thousands of books in their collection that you can choose from. You can buy the audiobooks individually, but the most common way to get them is to use their monthly subscription service where you get one audiobook a month for a very low cost. It's cheaper than buying them individually and you get to keep all of the books even if you stop your subscription to the service. They are offering my viewers a free audiobook just to try the service out. All you have to do is go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You will get to keep your audiobook whether you choose to keep the service or not, and just by signing up for the trial, you very much help support the channel. Many of you have already taken advantage of the trial, and I know from those of you that I talk to, you guys love the Wheel of Time audiobooks just like I do. If you haven't experienced the series in audiobook form, I highly recommend it. So let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. This video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers for the Wheel of Time, really through Towers of Midnight. We won't really address anything from A Memory of Light, but if you don't wanna know any of the answers to the questions about what happened to Asmodian, or if you aren't at Towers of Midnight yet, I would watch this video later. So now that the spoiler warning is out of the way, let me say that this video should actually be called Who Killed Asmodian? As I said, the answer to this question actually already exists, we know it, but most of the community don't seem to be aware of that, and it's really interesting to me anyway to go through all the possible culprits for his murder before finally revealing who did it. So let's first take a look at the passage where Asmodian is killed from the very last chapter of Book 5 in the series, The Fires of Heaven. Tucking his harp under his arm, Asmodian drifted away from Matt and Avienda. He enjoyed playing, but not for a pair who did not listen, much less appreciate. He was not sure what had happened that morning, and not sure he wanted to know. Too many of the Aiel had expressed surprise at seeing him, had claimed they had seen him dead. He did not want the details. There was a long gash down the wall in front of him. He knew what had made that sharp edge, that surface as slick as ice, smoother than any hand could have polished in a hundred years. Idly, but with a shiver, too, he wondered whether being reborn in this fashion made him a new man. He did not think so. Immortality was gone. That gift of the great lord. He used that name in his head, whatever Althor demanded on his tongue. That was proof enough that he was himself. Immortality gone, he knew it must be imagination, yet sometimes he thought he could feel time dragging at him, pulling him toward a grave that he had never thought to meet. And drawing the little of Sidene that he could was like drinking sewage. He was hardly sorry that Lanfear was dead. Ravine either, but Lanfear especially for what she had done to him. He would laugh when each of the others died too, and most for the last. It was not that he had been reborn a new man at all, but he would cling to that tuft of grass on the cliff's brink as long as he could. The roots would give way eventually, the long fall would come, but until then, he was alive. He pulled open a small door, intending to find his way to the pantry. There should be some decent wine. One step and he stopped, the blood draining from his face. You? No! The word still hung in the air when death took him. So let's start by listing the things we know from this passage and the things that Robert Jordan has said at the time. Robert Jordan said that Asmodian's killer was intuitively obvious to readers, implying that there was not only evidence of who it was, but that it was a character that we were already introduced to as the reader. He also stated that this was not a deliberate hit job, but rather a crime of opportunity, implying that it was a random encounter. So this had to be done by someone who would have had reason to be in Camelin at this time. You can imply from Asmodian's reaction that the killer was someone that he recognized based on the you? We can also imply that he was surprised from this. Whoever it was was not someone he expected to see or run into. We can also assume this is someone he feared as his face went white and he was terrified. So the killer had to be someone that we had previously been introduced to in the books through book five. It had to be someone who had reason to be in Camelin and could physically be there at this time in the story. And it needs to be someone that Asmodian not only recognized, but would have been surprised to see 
and someone that scared him. So let's first start with the characters who may have had motive to kill him. The most obvious characters would have been the other Forsaken. So let's run through them. At this point in the series, Balthamel, Agenor, Ishamael, Bilal, and Ravine are all confirmed dead, and Lanfear is believed to be dead. Balthamel and Agenor are reincarnated and brought back from the dead, but not until Book 6. They don't pass the test of intuitively obvious. Ishamael is also brought back later as Morden, but that isn't until Book 7. So again, not intuitively obvious. Bilal and Ravine are bale-fired, so they're dead without any chance of doing this. Now, Lanfear wasn't dead, but rather in the world of snakes and foxes and not able to be there to kill Asmodian. She would have had a motive and certainly would have scared him, but it simply could not have been her. So what about the rest of the Forsaken? Well, Gideon wouldn't really have had a motive, and she was captive at the time in Saladar. Simurag could have done it and certainly would have terrified Asmodian, but what reason would she have had to be in Camelin at that time? Also, she hadn't been introduced to us yet in person, so it couldn't intuitively be her. Misana is in the same boat. We haven't met her yet and don't have reason to believe that she would be there. Demon Dread hasn't been introduced to us yet either, other than by his name, so he really fails the criteria as well. That leaves us Samael and Grendel of the Forsaken. Samael was introduced in Book 5, so he is a possibility. He would know who Asmodian was and had reason to be in Camelin as he was a part of a group trying to turn Rand to the Shadow with Lanfear, Ravine, and Grendel. He is certainly a possibility, but it also seems that if it had been a male channeler that Asmodian would have felt them holding the source, as he was instantly killed, implying that whoever did it was holding the power as soon as he opened the door. Grendel is also introduced in Book 5, and she has the same reasons to be in Camelin that Samael did, and she would have easily recognized him as well. She certainly fits a number of the criteria necessary. Are there characters other than the Forsaken, though, that might have been responsible? Well, let's take a look at who may have had a motive. Shaidar Haran, the Dark One's avatar, certainly would have had a motive, but we had not met him yet, and Asmodian would not have recognized him for who he was, just as the other Forsaken didn't know that he was more than a normal Fade when they first encountered him. So Shaidar Haran really doesn't make sense, and he's not obvious. Slayer is certainly a possibility, and we did meet him in Book 4. It would make sense that he could have been sent after Asmodian as he was a traitor to the Dark One's cause. But this is said to be a random encounter, so it doesn't seem that Slayer would have randomly been in Camelin at this time, and it certainly is not intuitively obvious. Asmodian would have likely not been terrified of Slayer and could not have really died instantly because it wasn't channeling, and also he probably wouldn't have recognized Slayer. It appears that channeling was the cause of death as no body was found, implying that Asmodian was bail fired out of existence. This is something that Slayer wasn't capable of. The Golom could have been sent, but again, we don't see the Golom until Book 6, so this isn't intuitively obvious, and Asmodian seems to view this person who kills him as personal, rather than just some random tool of the Dark One. Mazram Taim is another suspect. However, like many others on this list, he wasn't introduced as a character until the next book, so it couldn't have been obvious. Patton Fane is a possibility, but he was actually eliminated by Robert Jordan in an interview. So regardless of whether he made sense or not, he's a no. Maureen Damadred is another person with a motive. She knew who he was and did not approve of Rand taking him into confidence. It is also well within her personality to take things upon herself and do the dirty work. But just like Lanfear, she was in the world of the snakes and foxes, and it might have gone against the three O's too, I guess. So based on everything here, I think the answer is somewhat obvious, but then again, I already know who it is. We find out in Towers of Midnight that it was, in fact, Grendel that killed Asmodian. Essentially, Shaidar Haran tells us that she is responsible for the deaths of three chosen, Masana, Arangar, and Asmodian. It's also in the glossary and in the companion stating that she was responsible. So does that make sense? Yeah. She was known to us as the reader. She had reason to be in Camelin as she was working with Ravine. She would have incited fear in Asmodian, and he would have been surprised to see her. It also explains why he didn't feel anyone channeling when he opened the door. There were plenty of women around channeling, so he would have had goosebumps, but wouldn't have suspected her. A couple of other things that give us clues from Grendel are where she assures Samael and Lord of Chaos that Asmodian is dead, despite none of the other Forsaken seeming to know that yet. Also, in A Gathering Storm, one of her point of view chapters, she makes a comment about the seven remaining chosen, again implying that she knew of his death when the others did not. So that answers one of the biggest mysteries from the book series. Grendel killed Asmodian. What were your thoughts when reading the books? Even though we know who it was, is there a character that was a suspect that I didn't hit on? How do you feel about Grendel being the killer? Please let me know in the comments below and go ahead and smash that like button if you like the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. I really try to get out three videos each and every week. 
sometimes more successfully than others. Also, take a moment and check out my Patreon page. You can get exclusive content and support the channel if you'd like what I'm doing here. Also, you can get the link to my community Discord server, where we can interact more directly. I am very active there and love to interact with all of you. I will repost the link on my Patreon so you all can get access. You can find that link in the description below. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?